Boker Tov, Denver, Erev Tov, Herzliya, and welcome to art lovers everywhere in between and all over the world. My name is Wayne Firestone. I'm the executive director of the America Israel Friendship League. And today, our Friends in Deeds series continues with this really special look and insight into Israeli art. We're excited to bring you a panel of experts on Israeli art from all over Israel in an intimate conversation that's not taking place in a museum or in a gallery where we would love to host you. But nonetheless, these you will see from photos of major exhibits, insights about these exhibits that the presenters have curated and hope that you will one day actually get to visit in person. For everyone who's on this call today and joining us from around the world, whether it's on Zoom or on Facebook, We'd love to know where you're calling in from. If you want, just send us a quick chat, send us a quick note telling us where uh, you're, you're viewing and whether you've seen any of these works of art previously. Um, we, we really do appreciate your taking the time during the day to join us. For anyone joining us live also, you'll have the opportunity to ask some questions. I'm seeing people calling in already from Columbus, Ohio, from Del Delray Beach, Florida, from Brooklyn, Savannah, Georgia, Chicago, Illinois, uh, really wonderful to see the the, uh, the breadth of, of interest in this topic today. You can also, oh, Modine, Israel, we have people just around the corner from our presenters as well. So make sure throughout uh, the uh, uh, presentation, uh, call in with any of your, your questions and we'll try to get to them as many as we can anyway by the end of the presentations. If you are on uh, Facebook by chance, uh, also you can host a watch party, which means all your friends who are looking for something interesting to do right now during uh, perhaps their lunch hour or as they're waking up uh, in Costa Rica. I guess they're just waking up. We have uh, 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 our first visitor from outside the United States. Um, uh, you can have all your friends join in as well. Today, uh, we have four outstanding presentations. So you're not gonna just get to hear about art. You're gonna actually get to see some of this. So let's jump into our uh, presentations. I'm, I'm so thrilled to have uh, Shaul Setter uh, uh, join us as the moderator for this panel. He knows each of the presenters intimately wet, well. He also knows a little bit about the United States, having uh, received and done his PhD at Berkeley here in the United States. He teaches comparative literature and aesthetic and political theory at Tel Aviv University and Bezalel Academy of Art and Design. He was an art critic for Haaretz and is now currently the editor of Theory and Criticism, a journal of critical theory published by the Van Leer Jerusalem Institute. Shaul, I'm going to turn over to you. We're going to have a wonderful discussion. Please lead us off. Thank you, Wayne. At the center of our event today is contemporary Israeli visual art. We're going to ask what are the challenges and obstacles Israeli artists, curators, and gallerists are facing today? in a shaky political atmosphere, in an uncertain economic situation, in a pandemic that threatens to narrow the place of all cultural activities. Israeli art has some unique and some common features. It came into being, so has been claimed, against the background of Jewish iconoclasm, Jewish existence deprived of material culture and aesthetic tradition, opposed to hundreds of years of Western Christian culture. It has been strongly influenced by the Jewish national movement, Zionism. First, it took an integral part in it. Then it distanced itself from it and later also severely critiqued it. And in recent decades, the strengthening of an international art market and the globalization of art has made a significant mark on it. Israeli art becoming also an art production exported abroad. Taking all this into consideration, we're going to ask, what are the main directions and trends in contemporary Israeli art? How does it negotiate modernist values and local traditions, the secular and the theological, the aesthetic and the political? Or what are its achievements and what acute issues it raises? To discuss these questions, I'm joined here today by four curators who in the last years have curated some of, the, some of the major exhibitions of Israeli art here and abroad. Ori Desso, who joins us from Ghent, Belgium, has curated exhibitions in Israel and in Europe. And 
also writes extensively about art. Nomi Givon has been running for decades one of the most important art galleries in Tel Aviv, the Givon Art Gallery, where she also curates exhibitions there and also in the Givon Forum at Nevet Sedek. Galit Matityahu, who is a senior curator of Israeli art at Tel Aviv Museum of Art, and Hila Kohn Schneiderman, who is the chief curator at Mobi Museums of Batyam. So our event will have two parts. In the first one, each one of, the, of, of our discussants will present a recent exhibition he or she curated. And then in the second part, we're going to have a discussion of some of the main questions regarding Israeli art that arise from these exhibitions. You, all of you are invited to write comments and questions throughout the presentations and then during the discussions and we'll make an effort to address at least some of them. So the first presenter will be Ori. Ori, please. Uh, thank you, Shaul, for the great introduction. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, I'd like to, I always start my um, lectures or presentations about uh, general issues such as Israeli art or art in general um, with a, a quote by uh, no less than uh, Gombrich uh, in his famous book, uh, The History of Art, uh, where, which uh, reads, there is no such thing as art, only artists. So I want to start with a, a very concrete, uh, but nevertheless a, a canonical um, example. Um, that uh, in the form of uh, the great oeuvre of uh, Moshe Gershuni, who passed away uh, in the last decade. And uh, I would like to start by uh, sharing with you some of the considerations that were uh, at the heart of uh, the exhibition I curated together with Udo Kittelmann uh, around his work. Uh, in the uh, Neue National Gallery Berlin uh, in 2014. So, <clears throat> uh, so let me just start by saying that uh, the show was focused on what uh, uh, art historians refer to as the second Gershuni, Gershuni since the 1980. Um, so we were focusing more on, 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 on this part of the over, but nevertheless, we started with the work from 79 uh, which is a transitional work, uh, which uh, sits on the verge between uh, the two Gershunis, uh, the Gershuni until 1980, which uh, is um, mainly referred to as the, the conceptual Gershuni, and the Gershuni after 1980, after representing Israel uh, in the Venice Biennale, etc. So uh, the work that we started with that it's before the Shoah, uh, that you already uh, uh, confronted by in the lobby, is a text work in Hebrew uh, saying who's Zionist and who isn't. On the right side of the screen, you have uh, who, who is Zionist in Hebrew, on, on the left side, who is um, Zionist, uh, uh, who, is, who isn't uh, 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 in Hebrew words. And um, I think it's a great example of uh, Gershuni's use of language, uh, which is also apparent in his later, uh, in his later uh, phase as a, a painter of, uh, in the medium of the eruptive stain, which nevertheless, who nevertheless uh, combines uh, uh, inscriptions inside his work. So what I wanted to show through this work is that uh, on the, on, on the face of it, is, uh, it's a very simple, simple or simplistic work. Huh? Uh, divides the world into who is Zionist and who isn't. Forces us to choose sides. Very explicit work, very categorical, very dichotomous. Uh, uh, forcing us to choose sides, to, to decide on the trajectory of history. Um, but uh, I think uh, 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 one should pay attention to the way um, Gershuni is not just using language as a, as a medium of explicit statements, of dichotomous categorical statements, but also exposes the way in which language creates and constructs a, a meaning, because that the, the section who isn't 
uh, is uh, uh, purely a linguistic construct. Huh? It doesn't exist in nature. Uh, it doesn't. Uh, uh, um, it's something that is purely verbal, purely uh, linguistic, huh? and therefore it's artificial. Therefore, it's. Uh, 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 dependent on certain historical circumstances, conventions, ideologies, etc. So by on, wh while starting with a very explicit essentialist uh, uh, um, um, statement to decide who we are, what side do we take, uh, immediately thereafter Gershuni is, uh, is uh, uh, problematizing the, the, the medium of language and shows us that language itself is not uh, transparent, but it creates, it creates meaning. Huh? And therefore, it's an artificial construct, and therefore it can reflect also on the uh, idea that Zionism is not an essential position, but also a posi a, an artificial position. Huh? So let me maybe uh, uh, summarize it. Gershuni says who is Zionist and who isn't. Huh? So he divides the world who is to Zionism and anti-Zionism. He tells us that we have to choose sides. He tells us that uh, uh, the world is, uh, uh, is to be described in very explicit categorical terms. But then he also shows us that these things are very uh, much artificial huh? and therefore maybe even Zionism is artificial. So this is how I wanted, uh, this was the basic decision of uh, how we, 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 we welcomed the visitors into the exhibition. Uh, Shaul, if we can, yeah, so now we are inside the space. Also maybe a general comment on the, on the way we constructed the, the exhibition. Uh, the exhibition took place in the famous Miss van der Rohe glass pavilion on the underground level where it, uh, uh, where it used to be the graphic cabinet uh, for those who are interested. So how do you, um, and we decided to almost make this exhibition with no spaces between, between the paintings in order to show the, the, the yeah, the, the flow or the, the, the um, intensity of the way uh, Gershon is working. If we can go back, if we can go to the last image, yes. So, uh, yes, this image, please. Yes, uh, while thinking about the title of the, of the exhibition, we knew that we want to take uh, uh, one of the Gershuni's titles, one of the painting, uh, a title from one of his paintings, and we chose uh, the No Father, No Mother series of, uh, of, uh, of uh, paintings, which he did in uh, 1998. And uh, also I think this is a great example of how Gershuni is using language and starts in a very declarative, explicit, categorical way. Uh, when he writes uh, No Father, No Mother, uh, when he imprints the, the surface with uh, the words No Father, No Mother, he infers or implies the, uh, or provides the, the, the painting with a, with a speaker who is an orphan. He implies orphanage and uh, he uh, implies a superfluous uh, um, uh, speaker, uh, etc. But while digging into this, uh, he also, while digging into this, uh, uh, into this uh, description of a, of a, of a person, uh, who has no father, no mother, uh, we also um, came across uh, the famous quote uh, from uh, Georg Buchner's Wojcik. Uh, Shaul, probably you know better, uh, because we know Wojcik had few versions. I rely more on the version that uh, Werner Herzog was using in his uh, adaptation. Uh, but nevertheless, the last monologue uh, of, the, of the play is... Uh, is, uh, is uh, uh, Wojciech speaks about imagine a world with, or imagine me walking in a world with no father and no mother. So uh, uh, while, while uh, declaring on himself as an orphan huh, and in the sense and in the context of an Israeli artist that has no roots in modern or in, in European modernism, uh, I think this statement has a, has a great value, great added value 
because it also positions or reflects on the position of art making in Israel that has no context to refer to. So while doing it, while declaring on himself as superfluous, as an orphan, as somebody who has no roots in, in tradition, in, who has no background, uh, he also uh, uh, creates an affinity to no less than, than, than Buchner and, uh, uh, and the role he played in German Romanticism. Uh, so by declaring on himself that, he, declaring by uh, verifying himself as, a, as an orphan, as somebody who has no father no, and no mother, he creates his own father, which is uh, Georg Buchner, and situates himself and positions himself and contextualizes himself in the context of, uh, of German Romanticism and as, a, as, a, as the starting point for many, uh, for European modernism, etc. Okay, thank you. Thank you all. Um, the next speaker will be Nomi. Nomi, please. Hello, everyone. Uh, I have established this place, uh, uh, given out for me in order to show uh, how collection can be constructed during the years of Israeli modern art. Uh, more or less as of the 20s until uh, now uh, here and I have made this uh, presentation so that you can review it afterwards with the text and with uh, uh, and, and to see the whole exhibition and uh, uh, there are two exhibitions here one titled Measure and the one, the current one is titled Agenda, Age, it's my age, and uh, NDA, it's Non-Exclosure Agreement. And uh, what I want to say here, that there is a, quite a special secret in the art language, uh, the secret which I choose to, to, to depict and show to others, uh, those two exhibitions uh, do a lot with uh, materials. Water, here in the invitation, the Micha Ullman Connected Vessels. Uh, they do, and you can see the text which I wrote uh, about it. We see Nuri David here with works uh, on the floor that uh, remind you of clothing, which isn't quite so. Um, in the next picture, we see uh, Maya Thun with, uh, with uh, this curtain that was also on show in Japan at, at a very important, in a very important place. We see Ullman again with watercolors of connected vessels. Um, here we see Pierre Wig, André Parino, Yara Tsar, uh, Gabi Kricheli all with very different materials uh, depicting the disappearance and the existing and non-existing of the object. The whole idea of this show was whether the object is interfering the sculpture language or is it adding anything to, to, the, to the sculpture language and I wanted to differ between object and sculpture. We see Che Golombek, Avi Sabach, at the back here, uh, Moshe Gershuni also with uh, beehives. Uh, okay, we are now with Agenda A H and the A. Uh, we have a, a very good show uh, starting in 1952 with uh, Zaritsky, Joseph Zaritsky, the founder of uh, New Horizons. Uh, who also did the Venice Biennale in the first year, 1948. We have uh, uh, the text which I wrote, which is meant to be for the YouTube uh, viewers later when it comes on. Leo Tamim is, a, you have to click on Leo Tamim, is the youngest artist in this show. Can we hear? Could we hear this? Mm, there's a problem in hearing it. Now you were supposed to click on to click on this. Never mind. Uh, no. Yes, we, we still need. Holy future.
チャートップストサイレントケミストリージョニーアティプレペアパッションマニュアルホビーファッキングフォートナイト。He's the youngest in the Peso Slabosky actually was born in Detroit. He came to Israel in the 70s. He is not a, a part in the movement、uh, in Israeli art. I would say in a movement by himself.、Uh, he passed away la- last year, unfortunately. Avi Sabah, who lives now in Portugal.、Uh, Micha Ullman, it's a chair. Uh, with free sand uh, uh, thrown on the chair, the chair was re- removed and the sand was shoveled, and that's, that created the, the work. We have a beautiful sculpture by him as well,、uh, made of free sand.、Uh, here is the Zaritsky and Rafi Lavi,、uh, left of the Zaritsky.、Um, Uh, if we can see the sculpture of Michael Oldman, it would be nice. But,、uh, uh, here we see Rafi Lavi from 1960. Yossi Breger、uh, was the head of the, depart- the, the ph- photography department at Bezalel.、Uh, we made a tribute here. We are showing three works by him. We can go next. Uh, here we have、um, on the left hand side, we have Michal Neman and Moshe Gershuni on the right. You can see the word who can read it Hebrew, Naa, Naraiti, Vagam Zakanti, Veloraiti, Tzadik, Nezav, Vezanezav, Zarom, Vakesh Lachem. Here is also a young artist, Israel Kabbalah, and which is We, who is now, who has a show now in Tel Aviv in the gallery of the Amit Rosha.、Uh, these are all, all、uh, made on canvas. Here you see Galit Landau, Gdansk. It's titled Salt Lake in Gdansk,、uh, the city of Lech Valenza. And、uh, here she brought shoes from the Dead Sea covered with.、Uh, Uh, with uh, salt, and she had put it on the lake in order for them to, to sink in.、Um, so,、uh, this w- was presented at her show at the Venice Biennale when she represented Israel. Nuri David, again, this is a new set of works、uh, which she did about a year or two years ago.、Uh, here, Is again Pesach Slabosky、uh, with the assemblages. Also, is checking out between object and sculpture and what do you do with the object o u v e r which he did.、Uh, Eitan Ben Moshe、uh, also uses、uh, found materials uh, uh, from his environment. He puts them in a, in a light box. And uh, uh, this is the last uh, work in, the sh- in this show agenda. Okay, thank you, Naomi.、Um, and the next speaker is Delit Matitia. Delit. The lead needs to unmute. The lead? Okay. Now you hear、okay. me? I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead.、Okay. Thanks. Thank you.、Um, 
Mess was my, was the first exhibition I curated with my role as a senior curator of Israeli art. Therefore, it can be said that it embodies statement of intent or thought about the nature and essence of Israeli art. As much as we can talk about art, exhibi art exhibition or art in this manner. The Gordian knot between Israeli art and the establishment of the nation derives its symbolic, almost literal character. Landscapes, paintings, or portraits as the embodiment of the connection to the land and the rejection of the diasporic past. Later abstraction processes that also carry traces of locality in spite of the desire to be universal. I point out this point of departure because of the narrative, almost storytelling nature of Israeli art from the moment of its origin and its persistence and insistent search it has revealed throughout its history after a collective and personal identities. I might add also, I'm referring to art criticism and the way we were taught uh, to look at Israeli art, emphasizing what the image represents instead of directing the gaze to materiality and the modes of appearance of the artistic object. So to a large extent, the exhibition provided me a platform to think about overcoming representation, the places where the work is not about anything, but the thing itself. There were two defining moments for me regarding this project. The first was working with the artist Joshua Neustein, American Israel artist, on an exhibition he curated at the Tel Aviv Museum of Art and dealt with the medium of oil chalk, of panda, in Israeli art. What seems almost self-evident was raised in this exhibition as a radical suggestion dealing with the Israeli art not through thematic thinking, but through materiality. The second moment was a serious car accident that I underwent and completely changed my perception of art. The notion of the accident is a sort of a thread in this exhibition, and it is important for me to consider its meaning. I'm about to speak about a car accident, but it can be any major trauma, any deep disruption, or in the positive sense, any miracle like you see in front of you that happens to us against what we expected or known. And there's this moment that we are um, on our way, convinced that our lives are in our hands, under our control. And in one moment, instantly, everything turns upside down. This moment holds an immense intensity because you know that everything has changed completely. And at the same time, how arbitrary it all is, that this is what is happening now, but at the same time could have been completely different. What interests me is how art can relate to this moment, what its abilities to act against it or in relation to it, because the uniqueness of art is to appeal to the silent moments. The next stage, so to speak, of the accident is the loss of perspective. Everything becomes close, too close. And I compare this moment to the very act of creation itself, to the uncontrollable moments, to the con contingent moments of the material, and to the non-interpretive moment. You are within the experience and materiality is acting upon you. I believe that every artist or any person deeply immersed in thought or action meets this feeling uh, that the authority or ownership of your own work is taken from you. It's a very intimate and very secret moment. The last moment of the accident is the moment when you face a twisted object and ask yourself, how the hell did we get here? In other words, 
The exhibition basically presents the question of controlling the subject in the creative process, searching for non-sovereign moments. In a way, it's quite, it's a quite a tricky question because art at the end or from its beginning is a controlled act. And I did not search for works that were done from ecstatic, uncontrolled way. On the contrary, the exhibition presents very restrained works that hold abstract moments or lack of hold. Um, in the beginning of the presentation, there was this quote from, uh, Sotel, uh, from uh, Samuel Beckett. You don't have to go, I, I'll, I'll read it to you. One can only speak of what is in front of him. And that now is simply the mess. Uh, Shaul, if I have more, um, if two I minutes. have time, yeah. Yeah. two minutes, okay. Okay, it is, not, it is not a simple task conveying a special, special experience into words. And I suppose uh, the long introduction has not yet provided the connection between the ideas and the works of art in the exhibition space. So let's take, for example, the work of Chaim Duel Luski, whose conceptual and practical practice in photography raised the question, raised many questions, but one of them, can an accident be photographed? Luski's art presents the gap, <clears throat> sorry, between horizontal and vertical photography, meaning the gap between the representation of reality, what is in front of us, and the surrender to the occurrence, to, to the event. Uh, Heim's, uh, Heim's work tried to document a trauma that is no longer exists, the traces of an event that are no longer there. The work tries to capture a significant political event in Israel, the Wadi Salib events, series of street demonstrations and riots that took place in 1959 in the Wadi Salib neighborhood, a uh, neighborhood that was originally an Arab neighborhood whose um, inhabitants abandoned it during the War of Independence. Immediately after the war, the abandoned house were expropriated and the government settled mostly immigrants from the Maghreb, from North Africa, Jews from North, uh, North Africa. The events were social rebe rebellion against the provision and discrimination against a sectarian a background and against the Mapai establishment that ruled the country in those days. The pots you see scattered in the gallery are actually cameras where the photo paper is placed horizontally and around the pot there are holes through which the light enters and burns the photo paper. So the photos you see on the wall are actually traces of a simultaneous event of several accidents of light. The artist places the camera many years later on the land of Wadi, Sal uh, Wadi Salim and creates an event in which the light gives its testimony. For me, this is a key work to understand the ways in which art can embody the most literal political ideas, not in a manifest or literal way, but through the material accident that it can, be, can produce. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Dalit. And the last presenter is Hila Konschneiderman. Hila. Unmute. Okay, so hello everyone. Um, I'm the chief curator of Mobi Museums of Batyam. It's actually a cluster of three museums, three houses in the city of Batyam. Batyam is actually a rather small city, a coastal city south to Tel Aviv, Jaffa, and is defined as a socio-economic periphery, although it has a really great location, of course. And only two and a half kilometers from the north to the south and holds 160,000 inhabitants, so it's very dense. 
And the small blue dot that you see is actually Patia Museum of Art. It's the main venue of, of, the, of the three clusters. Um, so Batia Museum of Modern Arts was opened on 1962 as part of the cultural complex of Ramat Yosef neighborhood that was all together planned by a very important architect called Yitzhak Bernstein. And the museum, as you can see, um, was a brutalist pavilion and it was actually connected to a water tower with four floors that functioned as an artist studio. So the idea was not only to present art in a in a very small city, but rather to uh, create places for artists to live and create in. But 20 years ago, um, the, the nature of the museum had changed uh, architecturally and also content-wise, while the museum, the modern museum, turned into a contemporary art museum. And you can see that it's white. Um, it looks like it's in Miami, not like it's in Batyam, um, or like it's a small, maybe mini Guggenheim. And um, this change led to um, a conflict, I would say, with the place where the museum is located at. Because as I, as I told you, um, Batyam is a very poor city actually, defined also it's very central as a socioeconomic periphery. And the question that I started to ask myself, um, and I'm working in the museum for the last two years, was does art have a place in a city that is defined as a socioeconomic periphery, while most of the guests that are coming to the museum, most of the visitors are coming from out of the city, mainly from Tel Aviv, but not necessarily, and not so much of them are the inhabitants of the city itself. And that brought me um, to a question of beliefs, um, and, it, and I curated, um, a trilogy of three exhibitions that dealt with the connection between art and belief. And the third one was the believers. Um, in Hebrew, there's a very interesting connection between the word artist, means Oman, to uh, the word uh, emuna or omanut, amen, emuna, omanut, omanim. It's all the same, um, the same root. And you don't find it actually, not in English, not in Arabic, not even in Russian. So it's very unique to the Hebrew, to the Hebrew language. And I started to ask myself, what is the deep connection between artist and belief, between Oman, Emuna, and Omanut? So this is the, the main, uh, in the entrance um, space to the museum. And uh, I turned it into like a small temple, you can say. And in this exhibition, I search for artists that are dealing with questions of belief in their practice, or that their works could be considered as a work of art, a work of belief. And I gather together um, th three generations, you can say, of believing artists. So you can see in the same space, Moshe Gershuni, uh, that uh, Ori Dessau had uh, discussed earlier, Yael Burstein, you can consider her as a mid-career artist, and Lee Turgeman, which is a, a, a young artist. And I can say that I search for the energy that the object holds within them. I truly believe that when artists create a work of art, they insert to the objects this kind of energy. And another interesting thing in the, in the works, in the, in the exhibition, that many of them was created in processes while the artists were bowing, were kneeling. So when you bow or when you kneel, um, it's the only point actually when your heart is above your brain. Usually our brain is higher than our heart. And when, while bowing, the, the relation is changed. And I think that the artists that work in this, in this realm have a sense of humbleness that they know that the creation forces are moving through them. It's not their own, it's not the ego that is creating, but it's a much wider, wider and um, extremely strong forces that are going through them and create the work of art. So um, the, the, the idea of the floor, you could say, had a, has a, a very uh, intense role in the exhibition. This is another image from Gershuni's series um, that's called For Serious Song and, and was about um, um, a, a very Christian text, but in the, um, the painting itself, you can see a, a connection between Islam, 
Judaism and also Christianity altogether. So this is, for instance, an installation of Maya Aroch. You could see a floor piece, very dreamy with the force of the moon in the heart of it. But you can see here also a question about time, about ancient, ancient, ancientness and um, primeral forces. So it's like a clock without dials. Um, it was created um, from um, um, clay. And another major artist, also Avi Sabach, you saw his works while uh, Naomi Givon spoke. So Avi is painting on the floor. And not only he is usually painting on the floor, he's usually painting in darkness. So he doesn't really see what he paints. So he just letting, again, the force go through him. So this is kind of a snake, a sign of, of metamorphosa. This is a young artist that, again, is about ancient forces and, and uh, pagan forces. It was a sound piece and uh, wooden sculptures. And last um, is Hen Cohen. Hen Cohen is thinking in, in her art about disease. And a disease is a, is a moment where you acknowledge that there, there are forces that are stronger you. And you usually turn to ask for aid or help from this greater force. So just to conclude, for me, um, to curate in a place like Bakyam is always asking myself where I'm at. And although the exhibitions are totally about art, regarding art, they are also a way to address the reality in which the museum also exists in. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ila. Thank you, um, all, all, all four of you, for this uh, very interesting and, and um, varied ex um, presentations. So what we're going to do now is we're going to open uh, the floor for discussion. I'm going just to remind our viewers what we saw. So we saw one exhibition uh, of one of the, the, the prominent artists in Israel, Moshe Gershuni. Then we saw two group exhibitions in museums. Um, um, we saw the Litz uh, exhibition about mass, accident, disruption, and we saw now um, Hila's exhibition about the believers and theology. And in between, we saw Nomi's uh, independent exhibition of, from her um, art about, about mod the, the, the future, the, the past and present and future of modernist art. So I want to ask the four of you a question that um, um, I think is in the core of, of, of Israeli art. Um, and it is about the tension between um, the modernist and um, conceptual, maybe even universalist tendencies um, of, of Israeli art on the one hand, and the other hand, the more, the more local, maybe theological, maybe Jewish, maybe biblical um, um, traditions that um, are, um, put into those um, artistic um, experiences. So we have Joseph Flaschner um, um, asking about the role of Bible in Israeli mod modern art. And I want, so, so I want you to, to touch on that, on that question. What is modernist? What is not modernist? What is, what is traditional? How does tradition um, um, is, um, takes a role in this, um, in, in this uh, artistic endeavor? Uh, oh, we? Yes, I can start if uh, none of our friends... Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah you. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, I would say a few things. Huh? Uh, as I said, I uh, usually avoid these uh, generalizations. I also don't uh, use the term uh, Israeli art. I use the term art in Israel mm -hmm. uh, or Israeli artist. Uh, and then there is a question, what is Israel and uh, who is Israeli? And uh, of course, on this background, who is uh, Jewish? Uh, which is uh, the core question on which the jurisdictional uh, system of Israel is, uh, is based upon. But um, uh, so I would say a few things that are more like uh, 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 lines of thoughts of thought that uh, that guide me when I try to think about what is the meaning of doing 
art or showing art or communicating art uh, in in the Israeli context. Huh? So we have this. So first, I refer to Israel as a Jewish avant-garde. Huh? It's something that appropriated. It is an entity or some kind of uh, of historical move, histo historical political hegemony that took uh, that uh, appropriated the, the Jewish uh, terminology or the Jewish uh, thematics. Let's call it and uh, redid it or reinterpreted it uh, 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 in um, yeah in a modern form. Let's call it at least at least uh, historically or or fundamentally this was the case. Uh, this is one thing. Second thing. Uh, so yeah, on this background, what is the meaning to try to be avant-garde huh? when you have a revolutionary uh, regime that. Uh, that uh, took a tradition as it's uh, as it's uh, and reinterpreted it. This is one thing. Second thing, I think uh, uh, let's let's uh, let's uh, take something that was uh, very uh, prominent in the uh, Western art discourse uh, of the last uh, three decades, uh, which uh, it is a term coined by Nicolas Bourriot and Jerome Sanz, uh, relational aesthetics. Huh? Relational aesthetics means that. Uh, 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 there is no object, huh? there is uh, some kind of social structure or social uh, happening uh, that uh, is the extension of the object. Huh? So the art has no, has no uh, physical outcome, uh, uh, but it has some kind of uh, social interpersonal interaction as its uh, statement. Huh? Uh, and this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, uh, approach uh, 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 implies the boundlessness of contemporary art, huh? or the idea of having no borders, huh? having no contour of an object as the as the as the end as the end of art. Uh, okay, so let me, let me let me let me stop you, cut you here, and go maybe to the lit because I think that that what what the lit tried to do in her in her exhibition is about that that questioning the the status of the object of art the object of art mm -hmm. uh, is becoming um, um, an accident a disruption within a, a greater plan so so can can you say something about that yes yeah, so, but, but i would i would like to to relate to mm -hmm. relate to the question that was asked because there's a, it's it's very interesting because uh, um, the Israeli art, in many ways, pushed out uh, any trend or any uh, genre that was not aligned with the modernist conceptions uh, that demanded the secular, non-figurative space. And this, uh, the, the aversion of, of that, I can give an example, because in, in, in only a few years from now, you couldn't hang on the same wall a painting by Streifman or Zaritsky uh, next to a painting by uh, Mordechai Ardon, which is also, uh, uh, of course, an abstract art, but uh, that deals with uh, mysticism and Jewish mysticism. So it's something that was very... Uh, it, we have to, 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 to understand that today we can like um, raise uh, many questions, many, many uh, topics that were not allowed or were pushed out. Okay, Nomi, what do you think about that, about, about putting Zaritsky next to, or Ardon next to Zaritsky? And unmute. Unmute. So, uh, it's exactly what I want to show here it, uh, in Ivanato. Uh, there is a conflict. The conflict arises, Ori also pointed out, but we have to think of ourselves as a very new, new art world. Well, what is our whole art history is something like 120 years. Mm -hmm. uh, we, are, uh, we have to think every time what we are up against, especially that the, the information that we get today is vast, and, and an artist today has to at every given moment, he has to look at art in, in the whole. And uh, the emergence, uh, the emergence of art from every direction when you go to the Biennale. So if you want to, 
I think we have to think, and the little self in a, in, in a meeting here said that Israeli art exists. And this is the main thing for us. Once Israel, there is Israeli art, uh, and it exists, and it's uh, kicking, and uh, uh, I mean, it's, a, it's a disproportional to the to the society. That, uh, when you think of the numbers of uh, Israelis versus the numbers of artists, uh, we must be amazed that that there is so much doing and uh, and so many currents. If we want to talk about this goes more philosophically. There are currents, there are undercurrents. There is continuation of uh, what you say to about how you hang. Uh, 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 I do this exactly this confrontation here in in my space. Uh, and 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 what what's more, the Israeli art is not homogeneous. There is not an art movement that, that uh, it's not uh, an omelet from 10 eggs. It is really that it, the Israeli artist is an individualist. It's a pizza. Mm -hmm. It's not <laughs> an omelet, it's a pizza. It is such an individualist in, in the Israeli artist. When you look at art elsewhere, you think they are all singing a, 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 a on, the, on the same fruit. And okay. So and in Israel, it isn't like that. It, okay. You yeah. don't know what to expect from this originality. Yes, I wanted to say that, like, it, it, I think that in Israel, most of the artists are very religious, but they create their own religion. So in, in that way, they are still very individuals. And um, for a long time, um, there was a rupture between biblical origins, between more local myth. And I think that in, the, in this manner, the search after spiritualism is, is, is universal, but it has a very interesting implementation here in Israel, which is already so charged, you know, in these kind of contents. Um, So, so, so in, what you're, in, in what you're doing, you're actually looking it into spiritual traditions that are not only Jewish, right? So, so you're trying to, to think about sp spiritual traditions as, as something that, that in a way can not only um, um, localize um, the different uh, the, the different aspects of Israel of Israeli art or art in Israel, but 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 actually to connect it to 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 other traditions in different places. Exactly, and you can see today in Biennales and Documenta and so on, like in the biggest exhibitions around the world, this is a highly uh, hot, you know, topic. And it's not, it's, it's, it, I think that the, the search today after spiritualism is, is, is worldwide. And, you know, um, of course, there could be on, all kinds of opinion about it, but I think that the, in the end, it's all from the same origin. It's all from the same the, the same place that we are in search of around meaning, the question on the universe, on greater forces. So it, it, this is a joint endeavor, but each and every artist addresses it from its own you know point of view. And I say that artists are religious because they create their own ceremonies, they create their own practice, they create their own laws, they create their own fathers and mother in order to betray them. So there's something highly committed in being an artist. On the other hand, there is something iconoclastic about art. Exactly. Right? And and I think that that when when we when Ori showed us the Gershuni his Gershuni exhibition, it was obvious that Gershuni is is iconoclastic in in so many ways to so many traditions, including to artistic tradition, including to to the traditions that he took part in in the in the six the late sixties and seventies, right, Ori? So, yes, so I think. But but also okay. he is the greatest believer of all belie of all Israeli artists. Not only Israeli, actually. I think that Gershuni is one of the greatest believers uh, that ever exists. And I think that he's also a founding father today. And you can see many Israeli artists that really relate to him in his energy, in his content, in his way of... of that his, his art, in the end, is timeless. He's really powerful in that manner. Okay, so I, I want to ask you another question. It's a question about the challenges. What are the challenges 
that you know art in Israel or Israeli artists face today? What are and, and maybe these are challenges that 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 are um, common to to other to other artists in other in in in, in other arenas. But what what when when you think about and also you as a curator when you think about the what is the main or what what is yeah what is the main what is the main challenge today for art for for that art that we saw that that changed so radically from the from the sixties and seventies to our days right that's what I think Oli talked about when he when he when he talked about relational aesthetics I mean things that we didn't imagine that would um, be considered as art are today part part of the the main like within the artistic um, practices so. How how do you see this is we're going to wrap up. So how do you see the the the, the challenges or one challenge that that you are facing today in your practice? Maybe uh, just to uh, um, what I say now is ad hoc. Huh? It's not uh, I can uh, change my opinion or give a give a different uh, uh, entry uh, to the topic uh, uh, tomorrow. Huh? But nevertheless, I started to speak about uh, this uh, boundlessness that uh, was characterizing uh, uh, contemporary art through the through the notion of uh, relational aesthetics and art as social structure. Um, um, in Israel, I think the the the, the challenge is opposite. Huh? How do you how do you how do you work under the conditions of boundless of of, of uh, under, under the preconditions of boundlessness uh, of a country with no borders, uh, of a country that is all uh, anti is uh, is all being is very diffusive. Huh? So I think in this context, uh, unlike uh, the boundlessness that uh, uh, was uh, conducted through relational aesthetics in the West, uh, uh, in Israel, I think the challenge is opposite. Huh? How you establish borders in a way. How you establish the autonomy uh, of uh, the, the the space of art, the aesthetic field, uh, that it will not be swallowed by the yeah by the state, by the by the uh, Zionist indoctrination. I think and in Israel, signification in large. Yeah, sorry. And political signification in large, right? Well, uh, yes, and exactly. So I okay. think in Israel there is this specific challenge. Uh, uh, okay, and of course. Okay. Okay, the okay. lead. Uh, 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 well, I, I'm, I'm after Ori. I think uh, this is a great opportunity to embrace a uh, peripheriality, and if we think about uh, about uh, the way we see, there's the uh, peripheral vision or the eccentric vision and the central vision. And the thing I think that the peripheral or the eccentric vision um, can help us locate uh, movement and um, mainly I know about the eccentric vision or the peripheral that is very sharpened uh, in dark times or in darkness. So maybe it's a good metaphor. Interesting. As I, see it, um, I think that on the periphery art, art in art in Israel uh, is so interesting and so rich. It always amazes me. Um, it's such a small scene, and at the same time, it's it's intense and and layered. And really, I cannot get enough, you know, from Israeli artists um, or from artists in Israel. Like always said, I think that the main problem is 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 problem of funding, of state support in in culture in cultural. Uh, venues, but directly in artists. Um, there is no market in Israel. There, there are not enough collectors that support artists. Museums are battling on their own life. And, and I think that artists really uh, need all the support they can get. Um, so for me, this is the greatest challenge. And I always think, how can I support more in artists as an institution in the end? OK, thank you. And Nomi, last, not least, yeah. Uh, first of all, I agree both with Ila and Dalit and all of course, center and periphery was always uh, our, uh, our task to, to try to, to, to link it and, and work in, in a kind of uh, 
anyway, uh, local art uh, has to, to be supported uh, by the government and by people. But we have to love art. And once art is being loved and understood, our chances are much better and uh, not to have all those burdens uh, coming from the political. And I'm very happy to see that only very few artists are uh, mingling in politics uh, in this uh, universality has won, won this game. So it's universality versus uh, uh, local meanings. And uh, I think we, we will come out of this uh, as winners. I, I believe in our artists. I've always believed in that. Okay, thank you. So the sun is setting now in Tel Aviv. I, I want to, to, um, to thank Ori Dessau, Ila Kohn Schneiderman, Dalit Matitiao and Nomi Givon for giving us a glimpse of contemporary Israeli art. And to thank all of you uh, who watched us and listened to us. And I hope you got um, some clues about what's going on now and what to look for. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Joel. And you, uh, the, the sun is just rising here uh, on the other side of the pond. And certainly this conversation uh, helps us uh, uh, not only get through the days, but it helps us think about what is kicking in Israel. Uh, even though we've got, as I guess paraphrasing uh, Dalit, we have a mess in front of us. And we know that the many artists uh, who you work with and will curate exhibits in the future are right now looking at a mess and creating new works of art that none of us can even imagine today. That's part of the genius of the Israeli art scene and of Israeli society. And really one of the things we wanted to capture on um, this series, the idea that uh, friends and deeds can share from their hearts, can share from their experiences, can share from their pain, can share from the mess that's in front of them, what can then enlighten, what can then inspire, what can then create a conversation even with the challenges and with the distances uh, between us. So um, we are very grateful to all of you for sharing from the works that, that you've curated in the past. It gives us only a glimmer of, of what may be coming uh, for the Israeli art scene in the future out of this particular mess. And it also gives us another realm in which we see friendship between America and Israel um, uh, having a, um, a, a, a renaissance, frankly, in this period. We're now probably in our 25th live webinar between Israel and uh, the United States during this period. This coming weekend on Sunday, we'll have a photojournalist showing us images from both Israel and uh, New York, both in pain and in celebration. On July 4th, Independence Day weekend, on July 5th, to be exact, on Sunday, we'll have the Israeli Philharmonic playing songs of inspiration. So we're watching literally how artists and creators in Israel and in the United States are interacting and supporting one another during this difficult time. Thanks everyone for being with us. Thanks to all the panelists. We look forward to a summer of possibility and of hope uh, through these artists' voices. Please join us again. <laughs>